Hello everyone, welcome back. In this part, we're going to talk about JavaScript break and continue statements. You know that we have our simple for loop that we can have some variables right here, some condition here, and our simple increment right there. And here we can do whatever that one, and it's going to loop through this code and print our i for us each time what it is. As you see, first we have this zero, then number one, two, three, four, and five. One thing that we can have right here is that when we want to reach i equal to 3 we want to get out of our loop what i mean is as you see we have our console log we're going to check if i equals to number 3 then we want to run this code of console log i is 3 and now if we run you can see that here we have run that code when our i is 3 so our condition right here be true and here we're going to print our code inside of our if statement. Let's say here we want to have our break right here. So if we run our code, you can see that here we have our zero, number one, two, three, and then this break after number three. And here we want to use our break statement right here after number three now if you pay attention and run our code you can see that we got printing our zero one two three but after printing our number zero which is right here it's going to check and see because i is equal to three it's going to run this code and this statement is only one word and don't have parentheses as function or something else it's just this word and it's going to go out of our loop and after this runs we don't have our i to be number four five or six and of course we can have this to be in any number that we want for example let's say we want this to be in number one so if we run this code you can see that we got this of course and we can use the same thing that we use in for loop in our while loop too so here let's say we have this i to be zero right here then we have our simple while loop with condition of i less than 10 for example and inside of this again we're going to console log and print our i right here now we have to add this i plus plus so we want to increment each time and have new value for our i and now if we run you can see that we got 0 1 2 3 until number 9 and now again if we want to use our break statements right here here we use our if statement we say if i is equal to number six for example we want to have this break and now if we run you can see that here first we're going to have zero one two three four five and after five because we incremented our i before of this if statement it's going to be six and run this break statement but if we have this i plus plus lower than our if so it's going to print number six and then break pay attention that in the last situation which is right here it's going to come and when this prints i number five this is going to make our i to be number six and this condition is going to be true and we are not going to print number six into our console so if we put this i plus plus after our f and run our code again you can see that this time we have this number six here Two. Another thing that we can have with our loops is our continue statement and cure. Now let's have simple for loop here again, which here i is 0, i is less than 10, and i++. plus plus. Here we put another if statement right here, and condition is going to be if i equal to number 5. And here we want if i equals to number 5, we use our continue keyboard right here. And after this, we have this console log of our i value. 
Now, if we run, you can see that we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we skipped number 5 and go from 6. Again, we have number 7, 8, and 9. So, what this does is going to, if this condition is true, it's going to run this continue. And what this continue do is going to skip all of the codes after itself. So it's going to skip all of these codes because our i is number 5. Let's say here actually we have two console log. One is before of this continue and one after. And here we have this before word printing. And here we have after in our console log. Let's say here we don't have this continue statement and keyword in our for loop. Now if we run, you can see that we have to actually let's add another space right here and now run again. You can see that we have 0, 2 time, 1 before, 1 after. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to number 9, 1 before and 1 after. But when we use this continue keyword right here and run our code again, you can see again we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all before and after. But in number 5, we only seeing before and not after. And that is because of this continue is going to skip the codes after this keyword. And of course, we can have multiple conditions right here. For example, if i equals to 5 or i equals to 7. And now if we run, you can see that here we're going to have all of other numbers twice, but we're going to see number 5 and number 7 only once inside of our console. And you can have all kind of condition right here. So let's say we want to have only odd or even numbers. We're going to say if mod of i divided by 2 is going to be 0, we want this continue. And now if we run in this case, you can see, let's actually delete this before console log right here and have only our numbers here. And now if we run, you can see that we got only our odd number. But if we make this number 1 and run our code again, we're going to get only our even number. And of course, you can use both of your continue and break keywords together. So, here you can see that we have this continue, but we want to have break keyword here too. You know that this case and this code is going to print us only our even numbers. So if we want to get out of our loop on one of our even numbers, if we have this code right here and say if i equals to 6 for example and here we use our break keyword just right here and if we run you can see that we got number 0 2 and 4 because after number 4 it's going to be number 6 which is going to apply this break and our console log is not going to work but if we use this in odd numbers so if we don't have this break right here and run our code you can see that we got numbers of 1 3 5 7 and 9 and here if we have this i equals to 6 and break right here and run you can see that we got again those numbers and that's because when this is going to run and in the process of this loop when i is going to be number 6 here is going to be true so when this is true, this going to apply this continue keyword and statement right here. So it's going to skip through this remaining codes and skip our break keyword too. So if you want to use your break and continue together, one of the best ways that you can do to not have any mistakes inside of your code to have your break above of your continue statement and keyword. In this case, it doesn't matter how you put because this condition is going to be rendered before of this one. It's going to work. Now, if we run, 
you can see that we have only number 1, 3 and 5. Please give a like and subscribe to catch next videos.